If you are watching this video, you probably already know what's going on with Maverick Vinales, Yamaha and Aprilia. Words are being thrown around everywhere, a lot of hush-hush from team bosses, factory offers being turned down and more rumours than I can keep count of. In this video, let's try to sum up everything we know at this point about this saga and in the end speculate where it might go in the coming weeks. My name is Sankalp and this is your Racing News Fix. First up, when did it all start? The year was 2016. Five-time world champion Jorge Lorenzo decided to jump ship from blue to red and join Ducati at the end of the year. And Yamaha decided to fill that void by stealing Maverick Vinales from Suzuki and the potential was truly there. In Suzuki's second year of return in premier class, Maverick finished in P4 overall, a whopping 109 points ahead of his teammate on the same bike. 2017 pre-season started with a lot of promise for both Maverick Vinales and Yamaha as he topped most of the testing days. He started the season in a similar fashion with three wins in the first four races. But sadly, that's where it all stopped and he finished 2017 season in P3 with just those three wins and a total of seven podiums. Not bad at all for a first year on a new bike, but the one common problem throughout, lack of rear grip. In 2018, Marc Marquez and Andrea Dovizioso were in a league of their own and while nobody could quite match what those two were doing, Still Maverick and Valentino Rossi were there to pick up the pieces and ended the year in P4 and P3 respectively. But the chronic lack of rear grip stayed with Vinales all year long. 2019 was the year when signs of frustration started showing up in Maverick's side of the garage. He always topped the testing days, ran at the top of the sheets in free practice sessions, had decent qualifying days, but made a habit of falling behind at the start of the race and not recovering much through the race. The blame was always placed on the Dunlop rubber laid down on the track by Moto2 race preceding the MotoGP race. But it was the same for entire grid and he was the only one complaining. So that excuse didn't change anything. Things took a turn for much worse in 2020 when Yamaha also dropped the ball a bit and Vinales could manage just one win through the entire season while the satellite boys took three wins each and in his own words, he was surprised when they offered him a two-year contract for 2021 and 2022. The saving grace for Vinales all this while was the fact that Rossi on the other side of the garage was having similar rear grip issues as well. But come 2021, Rossi is off to Petronas SRT and in his place is a young gun Fabio Quattraro who for whatever reason has been able to ride past the so-called lack of rear grip issues while Vinales in blue and Rossi in turquoise are still battling the same issues. It all escalated very quickly when Vinales had a shocking last place finish at Sachsen Ring and slammed the Japanese factory for everything. He said, you want to know what happened? I also asked Yamaha, but no one told me anything. I always have the same problem and that is that the rear wheel skids a lot. I have been saying the same since Portimao and there is no solution. It is true that we are working, but six races have already passed to find a solution. I really try to be calm. I try to work. I try to do everything. Now my job is only to collect data. It is sad, but that is the way it is. Then came the Dutch GP weekend and something was clearly off right from Thursday. Yamaha cancelled his media duties for the day and later that night, the rumour broke out that he was all set to break his contract with Yamaha and reunite with his old Suzuki teammate on Aprilia this time. Both Aprilia and Yamaha remained tight-lipped throughout the weekend which clearly meant something was cooking behind the doors. The race ended with the Yamaha 1-2 and for any team, it doesn't get any better than that on Sunday. But the celebrations or lack of them once again opened a can of worms. In post-race interviews, Maverick outright denied any link to Aprilia but didn't deny him considering parting ways with Yamaha. All through the multiple interviews, he kept repeating the same thing. I just want to take out the maximum. I just want to come to racing and really race and give it everything I have. Right now, it is difficult. When I come to racing, I just say, what problem am I going to have in this race? And this is a problem. I just want to come here, give the maximum and see where we are. For sure, in Sachsen Ring, I wanted to go home on Friday already because it was a desperate weekend where I explained well. I explained everything, but we were not able to improve. Here, thank God I had grip. The track is good. The track adapt a little more to the bike so I can be fast, but I am far from my full potential. The only thing I want to do is take out my full potential. And sure enough, on the first day of summer break, the divorce was announced. Before we go any further in this video, please take 5 seconds to hit the subscribe button because hardly 10% of you are subscribed. Come on guys, help me out a little. Now since we have that out of the way, let's get back to the next bit. What is next for Maverick Vinales? Even before the final announcement, Aprilia Racing CEO Massimo Rivola made it clear that they would be interested by saying, if he is free, we will try, but we have to respect the team and the contract. Even Alicia Spargro is ready to welcome Maverick Vinales to Aprilia with open arms. He said, 
I don't know if it is true or not. What I can say is that I like Maverick a lot. He is a great talent. I'm not sure if he is enjoying himself. If he decides to make a big life change like this, the only thing I can tell him is to go for it if he feels that it is the right decision and if he feels happier. He will be more than welcome. I know how fast he is. I know how hard he is working. Maverick deserves to be happy. So why not? Some rumors linking him to a VR46 seat alongside Luca Marini also appeared soon after the announcement of the split, but all of them disappeared within a day, with multiple Moto2 riders rejecting the Aprilia ride and Andrea Dovizioso taking his sweet time to give them a firm answer, Aprilia are now in a desperate need of a proven race winner alongside Alicia Spargaro. So judging by all this, it looks like Vinales moving to Aprilia might be a done deal already. But what's puzzling me right now is why would Aprilia unnecessarily delay the announcement? And finally, let's touch base with what's next for Yamaha. With Maverick Vinales parting ways and Valentino Rossi on the brink of retirement, there will be two empty seats in Yamaha next year. A lot of names from both inside and outside the paddock are being linked with these two seats. So quickly, let's go over them as well. The obvious option is to move Franco Morbidelli to the factory seat and reunite him with his teammate from last year. Speedweek.com claims that the deal is already finalized but nobody else has reported it so far, which means it could just be a speculation. Whatever it is, to me it makes a lot more sense to show Franco some factory love. Even before the cracks in the relationship between Vinales and Yamaha showed up, Yamaha have been desperately trying to get Raul Fernandez and KTM to invoke the buy-off clause in his contract and steal him away from KTM. Every now and then, there are multiple rumours doing rounds regarding Raul's future, but nothing is set in stone yet. Raul isn't the only one Yamaha tried to steal from KTM. Miguel Oliveira has revealed that he was offered Maverick seat, but he has declined it and will honor his current contract with KTM. Another huge name being linked to one of the Yamaha seats is Andrea Dovizioso. Adamant to make a comeback to the paddock in 2022, Andrea might have played it to perfection. He kept Aprilia on the hook all this while, keeping an eye on the rest of the grid. Who knows, maybe we'll see Andrea on a Yamaha next year. From outside the paddock, Yamaha reached out to their world superbike rider Toprak Rasgatlioglu for one of the Petronas SRT seats, but in a surprise chain of events, the Turkish rider has declined the offer and instead signed a two-year extension to stay put in WSBK category. With Toprak seemingly out of the running, the front runner to switch from WSBK to MotoGP paddock is a much more familiar name to those who only follow MotoGP. You guessed it, it's Garrett Jerloff. In a one-off opportunity, he replaced injured Franco Morbidelli for the Dutch GP. As the situation evolved over the weekend, it was less of a one-off opportunity and more of an audition. With his impressive and consistent performance throughout the weekend at one of the most technical venues, his chances to join Petronas are really good. Not to mention, his nationality has Dorna all excited, and they would love it if they can have an American rider in the MotoGP paddock. Also, since Toprak's rejection, Moto2's Jake Dixon's name is also being linked to one of the Petronas SRT seats. Although he is not doing as well as he would have hoped in this season, Dorna would love to have a British rider in the MotoGP paddock as well, and him being in the junior Petronas team makes it that much easier. Although nothing is signed yet, I feel Franco will move to the factory Yamaha and Jerloff will fill one of the Petronas seats. The other one will be filled by either Raul Fernandez if Yamaha is able to convince him and KTM, otherwise we might see Jake Dixon step up to the premier class. If you made it till here, let me know by hitting that like button. For more such content about all things MotoGP, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. Here are two more videos which you might enjoy. My name is Sankalp and this is your Racing News Picks.